Um, okay, so in this video, I will, uh, tell, I will tell you about the, um, the, uh, the, um, ma magic, new magic items I came up with for D&D. &D. Uh, also, well, one, two of them are not really new. I, uh, it's the Iron Hand of Vecna. Um, Matt Colville said that, um, said that, like, in, uh, that, like, the DM sort of chooses what they do. Uh, Matt, Matt Colville is another good D&D YouTuber. He is, I, I sort of copied his first dungeon, because it's awesome, but, like, I've, I've changed it up a bit. Uh, so... The Iron Hand of Vecna are different. They're sort of Stranger Things themed, of course. Uh, okay. I, I also have two... I also wrote, of course, wrote them down. I have two pieces of paper. They're double-sided. Uh, so there's... Okay, Magic Items, page one. There's Mjolnir. Plus seven to hit. 3d10 plus five bludgeoning damage. Uh, 1d12 plus 3 lightning damage, and 1d6 force damage, and, uh, you can throw it with advantage, you, if you throw it, um, any 20 feet or closer to you, you do the hit with advantage, um, if it's between 20 feet and 120 feet, um, it's just regular, and if it's any farther, it's disadvantage. There's no limit to how far it can go, If but if it's past 220 feet, it's just disadvantage. Uh, Blade of Woe, plus 7 to hit, uh, 2d10 plus 4 piercing damage, 1d12 plus 2 cold damage, because it's like the cold, because it's like you're being touched by the cold grasp of death. And 1d6 force damage. Uh, you could throw them 60 feet, and with disadvantage, 120 feet. And they do, and it does twice as much damage if the target is not aware of the holder's presence. So, like, if, um, so, like, if you're sneaking and you stab them in the back, that'd be times two damage. So you had to roll all the dice and add them together or for the damage, and then you would multiply that by two, so it's quite powerful. Uh, blood mail, um, plus four to your armor class, medium armor, it drinks visible blood up to five feet away from the wearer, uh, like, the blood has to be visible, so, like, if, if you're wearing it, it cannot just suck blood right from your veins, like, through your skin, no, it has to be visible blood, and it it should have also put down there that does not drink the blood of the wearer. So, so it's more like Vampire Mail, I guess. Is that a better name? Maybe. Um, for every 10 liters of blood the armor drinks, the wearer heals 2 HP. If this exceeds the wearer's max HP, they gain that amount of temporary hit points. That lasts until the armor is taken off. The armor is uh, sentient and very hard for creatures other than the wearer to take off. So like if you're captured by a goblin and you're wearing if you're captured by goblins and you're wearing the um and you're wearing blood mail, if they try to take it off, it'll be hard for them. So if you try to take it off, it'll be like taking off a normal shirt. Very easy. Um yeah. Uh DC seventeen with disadvantage for taking it off for other creatures. Okay. Now, this is something I came up with recently. Moon glasses. They're sunglasses. Why not moon glasses? <laughs> uh, you get dark vision as far as you can see, but you can see at a 5% shorter distance, because, like, no, no. Nah. Well, uh, yeah. Um, if you are wearing them in, like, a warm and sunny day with, like, no clouds in the sky... If you if you look at the sun, you will go blind, like completely blind, because sunglasses make things darker, so it's harder to go blind. Moon glasses makes things brighter, so you can see in the dark, and it's easier to go blind. Uh, lightning in a bottle, if shattered, summons an aspect of Kukuo Shan. Darn it, I'm gonna need to make stats for that. 
uh, in the nearest unoccupied space to the shattered bottle. The bottle can only be used once. Uh, so if, if you haven't seen my video on who is Cooper LaShawn, go, go watch that. Because that's probably going to be kind of important for my campaign. Um, uh, do I'm getting thirsty after this and I need some water. Uh, so uh, I didn't really put a limit. So maybe just... Your strength modifier times five? I don't know. Uh, so, like, if you throw it, then, um, then, uh, and it shatters, it only works if it shatters, then it summons an aspect of Kuku Oshan at the nearest unoccupied space. So, if that space is occupied, it goes to the nearest unoccupied space. Well, it appears in there. In Shades of Luck, this I made from experience. I will tell the story later, actually, maybe. No, I'll just do it right now. So I was playing badminton at school. I was on a team of one, and I was up against a team of three, and I won. And I was wearing um, shades. I was wearing sunglasses to keep hair out of my face and stuff. Um, anyway, I, I'm still kind of blown away by how I did that. Anyway, shades of luck. The wearer has advantage on everything, and feel, feel, they feel a bit more joyful. Anyway, that's it for page one. Oh, actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna give um a quick you know, a quick look in case you want to screenshot it and use it for your campaign. Um, all right. Uh, magic items page two. Just a quick look in case you want to use that for your campaign. Um. Jesus' staff. Jesus is a lich that I will use. <laughs> it's, um, uh, 80, 80 feet, um, and, uh, or you could shoot at 80 feet, or up to, um, 160 feet with disadvantage. Uh, plus three to hit, um, 2d, uh, 2d8 plus 4 lightning damage, or, well, it sort of has two attacks, there's, it shoots a red lightning, um, bolt for 2d6 lightning damage, or it can do a 1d8 force damage, and if possible, the tar- if, like, it, the space behind them, the target is unoccupied, they- are moved back five feet and must make a DC 19 strength check. Uh, I mean a DC nine strength check, saving th strength saving throw or be knocked prone. So it's it's not uh, the force damage. It's not too powerful, but it moves things back and possibly knocks them prone if they're like really weak. Uh, the lightning. It's it's like upside down lightning. Orcist Goblin Cleaver, which is, it's from, uh, The Hobbit. <laughs> uh, plus one to hit. It's plus two to hit against all Goblin Wines. Um, 1d8 plus one slashing damage. 1d8 plus two slashing damage against Goblin Wines. That's pretty much it. Uh, it's, it's a longsword that does really good, that's, like, uh, slightly stronger against Goblin Wines. It's, um... Matt, Matt Colville gave me the idea again, uh, because I, I, like, copied his first dungeon. Well, mostly copied, I guess. Uh, D is big, uh, so there's D is big nuts, D is a squirrel, and, uh, those are his, they're nuts, they're, like, acorns, and they're, uh, they're, since they're acorns, they're, like, the size of my palm, because acorns are normally small, but they're, like, they're, they're like, they're big. Uh, when you have both of them in your mouth, you heal 2 HP every 30 seconds. Actually, I might change that to whenever you have one of them in your mouth, you heal 1d4 HP every 30 seconds. I might change that. Uh, Eye and Hand of Vecna. The Eye, uh, Eye of Vecna can be used to open portals to the Upside Down that last for an hour and mess with the minds of any sentient creature with an intelligence of 5 or higher. Um, and can use the hand, and if you have the hand of Ectona, you can kill the target, uh, brutally. So it's like Stranger Things, uh, Vecna was making them see, like, clocks in objects. You can do that kind of thing with the eye of Vecna. Um, uh, so, like, I could, I don't know, uh, you, instead of clocks, it could be, 
I don't know, like, and pretty much, pretty much anything, it's, uh, you could see, make it seem like it's, I don't know, raining bullets, I don't, or arrows, or spears, uh, to, to your target. Uh, the Hand of Ekna can be used to cast telekinesis on up to five objects and creatures of medium or smaller. And the wielder can use its turn to choose one creature it can see uh, uh, to kill a creature huge or smaller. It takes until it takes two turns for the wielder of the Hand of Vecna to um, to destroy that creature. So it's like how Vecna uh, destroys Chrissy in Stranger Things. Like that's that's pretty much it. Brutal. Uh, um, it takes two turns because one turn is six seconds and. Yeah, uh, huge or smaller, um, for time. If it's tiny, then just instant death. Like, uh, and the target must concentrate, and um, the wielder of the hand of Ekna must concentrate on it. Uh, if the target is freed, so like the concentration is broken, uh, then they have one d four HP left, uh, are prone and incapacitated. The hand can be used for a claw attack for 1d6 damage, because... Oh yeah, so the hand of Ekna, I don't really have a good description. I, I think I'll just use... I get the eye of Ekna just looks like the regular one from um, Monsters Inc. from Dungeon Master's Guide. The hand of Ekna is more like sort of a forearm, so it's like here to, to your hand. Um, it has six fingers, it has kind of long claws, like that. Uh, and... Um, and of course, like the Vecna, he was a lich. He, he, um. So it's like it's like sort of green and rotting, and smells of, and and smells of rot, and yeah, it smells of rotting flesh. Um, like it's it smells like the mine what the Minecraft rotting flesh would smell like. Uh, anyway, yeah, I plan to use all of those magic items in my campaign. Um. Uh, anyway, uh, thank you for watching, like, subscribe, and if you haven't yet, watch my D, watch my, uh, D&D, &D. yeah, watch, watch the first two episodes of my D&D &D campaign, episode 0 0.5 first, before episode 1. Uh, bye.